Hi everybody, hello again. Today I want to go back to those early days of uh, baseball, roughly 1939 to be exact. And I want to recall a very colorful baseball player by the name of Ernie Lombardi. Ernie Lombardi played in the majors for 17 years, from 1931 to 1947. Now, Ernie Lombardi stood 6 feet 3 inches tall. He weighed about 250 pounds. He had a large nose and he got the nickname the Schnars, which I think uh, was a nickname that uh, Jimmy Durante had just about the same time. You know Jimmy Durante, the nose knows. And uh, Ernie Lombardi was famous in many ways, and one way was he was the slowest runner probably in the history of baseball. The infielders all played on the outfield grass, and uh, occasionally he'd hit a base hit to the outfield, short outfield, and yes, he would be thrown out at first base. It did happen to old Ernie Lombardi. Now, his name became legendary, as uh, always is the case when there is some kind of a mix-up, an error in the World Series. And in Ernie Lombardi's case, it was the 1939 World Series, with the New York Yankees, no less. And he played for the Cincinnati Reds. Now. The way I recall it, uh, as I read the internet pages, there's disagreement, a lot of disagreement, amongst the, all the writers as to what really happened in 1939. Anyway, the Yankees won the first three games. This was the fourth game that was being played at Cincinnati's Crosley Field, I think it was. Score was tied. Uh, it was the top of the tenth, and Yankees have two runners on base. And once again, this is my memory. It could be questioned. Charlie Keller was on base, and Phil Rizzuto was on base. Although I read that uh, it was Frankie Corsetti. But my, in my memory, it's Phil Rizzuto. So DiMaggio is at, Joe DiMaggio is at the plate. He hits a single. Charlie Keller comes in from third. Ernie Lombardi, big giant Ernie Lombardi, blocks the plate. Charlie Keller, the left fielder for the Yankees, also known as King Kong Charlie Keller. Hurtles into Ernie Lombardi and knocks him down and apparently knocks him out. The ball trickles away. Charlie Keller scores and Phil Rizzuto scampers around. Of course, Phil Rizzuto doesn't run. He scampers, scampers around, scores. Now, Joe DiMaggio, who hit the single, is now come, heading to third, reaches third. And there's this pause as the Maggio size up, sizes up the situation. Ernie, body, Ernie Lombardi is still lying there. The ball is still loose. The Maggio runs. The crowd gasps. It's, every, it's a rem reminiscent of a stolen base. And uh, the Maggio makes it. No problem, <laughs> Ernie is still snoozing. And this incident is often referred to as the snooze. 
so you might say the schnoz snoozed. And the Yankees uh, won that fourth game and they won the World Series four games to none. Now, this story paints uh, Annie Lombardi as a kind of a comical character, slope footed, heavy, big nose, not unconscious, although he claims that it was a hot summer day and it was a heat more than anything else that put him down. Anyone by was no joke as a baseball player and as a catcher. Anybody remember what pitcher pitched two consecutive no hitters? Oh, it was Johnny Vandenbeer of the Cincinnati Reds in June 1938, and the catcher was, of course, Ernie Lombardi. Ernie Lombardi was on the All-Star team eight times, it's the National League All-Star team. He was the most valuable player in 1938. He was two-time National League batting champion. 1938-1942, hit 20 home runs in 1939, and although the uh, Reds, uh, Cincinnati Reds, lost the 39 series, uh, they went on to win the 1940 series against the Detroit Tigers, and Ernie Lombardi was the catcher. Now, Ernie Lombardi was born 1908, died 1977, and as the story goes, he was bitter because he was never inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame while he was alive. But in 1986, some nine years after his death, he was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. I'll leave you with one last thought. I think a body, because he was so slow, never hit an infield single in his career. And one writer poses the statement that Ernie Lombardi was therefore the most honest hitter in the history of baseball. He hits because he was so slow. His hits were real hits. The most honest hitter in the history of baseball. I think we all can chew over that one for a while. I know. <laughs>